Oh, a little workout for you. Get it. <laughs> In a minute. Can't make video. Can't make video, video. You know. For the OGs that did a dime, came back and rhyme on parole. Uh, For the homegirls with the scrap game, yeah. little homies that gang bang. From Pelican Bay to YA, rearrange your mind frame. Yeah, I know what you've been through. Uh, Shit, you had to go tend to. Your mama gave birth on the turf. I know them killers you can too. This for the lost generation. Broke as hell, mad and impatient. But if you know your history, you can't have a strong foundation, baby. Can't make video, video. You know, this is for sure. Anything I, I, I missed that you want to talk about? Or any good stories or good history you got for me? Oh, well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Um, uh, as for now, you know, we, you know, as you, we, we, we grow older, you know, we, we have a whole movie, man. It's like a movie. I mean, we got people. You know, Booyah's story wasn't, you know, it, it was all reality, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, people think that, oh man, our group was just, matter of fact, people thought we were just a gang, you know what I mean, Kev? They thought Booyah was a gang. We're not a gang. Booyah Tribe was our group, you know what I mean? You know, what's our pie rules our gang, but, you know, well, you know, the brand of the name Booyah because of the, the image of the red and the blue and, you know, um, it's just that for me, Ken, when I see now, I see a lot of the, you know, the rappers now, back in the days, you know, they was all quiet, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, they wasn't even loud back in the day. You know, I'm not saying being loud, I'm just saying, hey, okay, now, you see them now, they're older, oh, okay, but well, you wasn't banging when mm -hmm. we first came out, but we asked y'all, you know, when that Booyah book come out, you know, you're going to see the stories about, oh, shit, they banged on him, he didn't say nothing, he just... Just through the hand, you know. Come on, dog. We was we, we was making sure that we, you know, we were, you know, it was just a, it was a mentality. It was street mentality. It was just the way it was, you know. Just because we're in the music doesn't mean don't stop. I'm gonna bang on you. I'm saying where y'all from? Oh man, we just doing the music. Oh, okay. So you got a book coming out? Uh, we doing the book and a movie. And a movie. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, you know, there was a lot of times, you know. I mean, you know, like you know, like like you know, the first beef. The first beef of hip hop? No. Everyone thought it was what? Remember they brought it out? It was with Game and 50, right? With, I don't know if that, I remember they just said that was the first beef. I don't know. Okay. Uh -huh. First beef with Booyah Tribe and Tone Lo. That wow. was the first beef. <laughs> what was that beef about? Well, you know, Tone Lo had a nephew that, you know, was at a club one night, and, you know, a lot of the bodyguards, that bodyguards, a lot of big artists now, they were there. And, um,. You know, he, you know, he's just one of those guys that, you know, caused him trouble, you know, just a bully, you know what I mean? Just walking around and he was, you know, he was all toasted up and then, and then, um, he, we were, we were at uh, Ice-T show that time, the syndicate, and that night we were all in the corner just kicking back and just enjoying the show and he was walking around and he came and he, he passed one of my brothers, Monster, you know, back in those days. He don't step on no gangster Stacy Adams. Hell no. Hell no. He stepped on my brother's biscuits and so my brother pushed him and he turned around. He was about like six six. Tall motherfucker. So my brother looked at him, he looked at my brother, and they just stayed exchanging words. So I just came out of nowhere. I pushed my brother aside and I I, I blasted on him, man, right there, man. Boom. Was Tom Locke a crip? I don't know what he was because 
you know. I Just mean, trying to be a bully in the industry. Yeah, I think so. I mean, because he came a week after back to the club. This is Prince's old club. It used to be called Vertical, then they went to Grand Slam. He came a week later with all these football players wearing Tolo tribe hats, and he got on stage calling us out. Man, come on, dog. You know, when, you know, when, when, I, when I knocked his, 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 his old boy out, some of their homies let, they ran. Hmm. You know, you know, dragged them out to the whole club. You know, <laughs> lot, you know, you know, there was a lot of wood, a lot of, a lot of the bodyguards. That bodyguard, like you know, they were there. They seen the whole story. You know, and then you know, and then we, um, and then the whole two weeks, it was just going at it. And Hammer gave us, you know, trying to give us a ring about, you know, telling God about the squashing. But we we're like, man. Shit, you know, it's on, you know what I mean? So the thing about it, and then uh, we went to a show at the Palladium and uh, Tom Logan and his bodyguard, and um, the only reason why that we didn't crack off because the microception came out, you know, trying to stop everyone because everyone was pulling out guns in the back. But what happened with the whole show, they kind of turned on us. It was about like 10 of us, and it was about like, like 30 of them. But someone, there's a guy that used to do videos, I'm trying to get his name because he has the footage that he said, man, Booyah didn't run. When he seen the video, we didn't run. It was 12 of us. It was about 30, 40 of them. You know, we were right there. And that's when I called out, uh, uh, what's his name? The old bodyguard. He passed away. Uh, a big old dude from New York. Yep. You know, my brother called me and said, man, man, God, he fight that motherfucker. <laughs> Took my shirt off. He was like 6'8", man. He's from New York. Are you the youngest? Yeah, I'm the baby brother. I said, what's happening right here, motherfucker? Right here. And he, he, kept to, he, kept, he kept trying to talk to Roscoe. But Roscoe had the, had the train five seven on him. Roscoe, what's happening? Cuz, fuck y'all niggas. And that's when they brought my conception. My conception, Roscoe, put it down, put it down. And he was the only told. And next to know about 30 motherfuckers all came. You know what I mean? But, you know, my brother Copa said, man, fuck that. Let that big body go fight my baby brother right now. So I called him out. He didn't do shit. You know, but don't come to the club with some ex-football players and wear a tall old tribe hat and come on man we from the streets man fuck that gonna get recruit see and another thing too kev a lot of people didn't know you know godfather i mean i'm just saying this is our opinion my opinion you know back in the days you know a lot of rappers you know when they when they rolled with you know their guys it was no body but they had like really like off-duty cops what we did we took guys that were from prison you know that gave them jobs and now you see now everyone that's doing bodyguard work is mainly, you know, all dudes from the streets. Right. We, were, we were the first one called the Hit Squad. There was Big Mozilla, Big June, Madness, you know, those were all Roscoe's recruits. And they were all from different cities, some from LA, South Central, some from Compton, you know, they were all different. And main thing, I wanna make sure they all had hands. You know, what I mean they did. But we didn't we didn't come with guys that were off duty cops. Now they were all we we consider this all our family right here. We don't we, we don't need bodyguards. When they say, oh man, we you got they roll with their body. No, we don't know about it. It's our family. You know, and they're all Crips and Bloods, you know, from prison. They all did five, ten year bids, you know, got out and we created a job for them, you know, because they all were felons. So Roscoe said, hey, God, I know, you know, one of my boys, but he did my time. Okay, same thing, same thing, you know what I mean? And, you know, we created jobs for them, you know, and they don't forget, you know, they're, they're doing good with their families and, you know, but, I, you know, to me, in my opinion, you know, I mean, Someone can try to correct me wrong. I think we were the first one to bring street motherfuckers into the industry, you know, to know, wow, there's a whole different world, man. You know what I mean? Through the music, you know what I mean? You know, and, and like, like, you know, like me, you talked about it, Kevin. It was, you know, when you see Booyah, you see number of red rags, burgundy rags, and, and blue rags. You know, we know that, I mean, you know, I, I respect for the big on wax, but we, we took this worldwide. You know, they were like, oh shit, when we went to Japan, there was a like, Crips and Bloods together. Europe, same thing. Lollapalooza, same thing. You know what I mean? It was always a blue rag and red rag, you know? And Giz used to bring a big, Giz had a, kind of Giz, Giz and Roscoe had a big ass dog, it was half pit bull and a uh, 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 um, a mask, man. Big, his name was Blue. He wore a big old blue rag and a red rag. He, you know, he, he, you know, but it's just that, you know, that story right there was, you know, that was the first beef of hip hop. You know, and, you know, I mean, to this day, I, I always try to find the guy that has that video of us behind the palladium, you know, and because I remember Ice-T told us that 
he said, man, I seen the video of y'all. Y'all went at it in the back of plate and man, y'all didn't even run. I said, man, we don't run for shit, man. I said, we're we going we gonna to die that night. We're going to die that night. We're going we gonna to get them up. We're going we gonna to be some tired, scrappy motherfuckers, but we ain't going to. We ain't gonna let no more. I don't give for how money, but 30, 40 motherfuckers pop up. You know, and the only thing that stopped, trying to stop everything was my conception. My conception, they had, while he was in the car, in the convertible Mercedes, they pulled him out. And that's when we got, you know, me, me and Coppola, Coppola said, man, go ahead with my little brother, motherfucker. You know, my yeah. father, he, he was ignoring me. You know? You guys was cool with Ice-T? Oh, yeah, man. We knew Ice-T for a long time, man. Long time, man. Good, good, good. He made Godfather go way back, man. And, you know, he, you know, we knew Ice T from a long time, man. Was you guys out before NWA? We was out before, and Ice T can quote this. And matter of fact, there's a video that you know that we filmed Ice T saying this when we did our second album. Ice T said that he remember 1982 when um, he came to our house in Carson. That's when he had his red Porsche, and Godfather said, "Hey, can you read? Post that 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 clip for you." And it was a, a song that Red had called Do or Die in L.A. And it was all about crying everything from blood, pyro, whoop, 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 whoop. And Red busted it. I never forget Ice-T went, oh, shit. And this was in 82. See, Red was the only Samoan. Red had a group called Sinister Villains. When every time when a group that would perform in Carson at Big John's Hall or San Marica, it would be like the World Wrecking Crew, L.A. Dream Team, Coolio, Ronnie O, uh, Toddy T, uh, Mixed Master Spade, Red will always open up for them. His group called the Sinister Villains. And if you hear Red, Red Gangster was talking about street shit. He wasn't talking about, you know, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do my dancing move. I'm gonna. He was talking about shit about. He was talking about gang banging and and crack. You know what I mean? We you know the only you know the only thing that in you know, '88, you know, they you know NWA came with the. They put it on wax, you know what I mean? And but Ice T always said it's the first time he heard he, he really heard gangster rap was from my brother Gangster Red. And that was in 83, 82. Did you ever meet Easy? I yeah, we met Easy uh once because you know at uh, Jerry's Deli. Cause he had the two twins, the, the original Booyah twins, Jacob and John, that bodyguard him for years, you know. That they used to be with us first. And then they went to work for Easy to, to watch Easy, you know. Um did you ever meet Tupac? We met Pac at the we met Pac at the the movie premiere South Central. Did you like Pac's music? Oh yeah, oh yeah, love Pac's music, man. He, I mean, he's one of my favorite rappers, man. Pac, I love what he stands for and what he was talking about. You know, and everything he did was real. You know, I mean, he wasn't no, you know, he wasn't a shit cop nothing, man. You know, he was he was himself. You know. But yeah, but, but he's one of my he's one of my top favorite, you know, all his albums, you know, Pac is one of my favorites. What uh <clears throat> was there ever a time Death Row Records trying to holler at you guys? Yeah, sure Suge wanted to uh he wanted to sign us as a band, you know what I mean? Because, you know, when we had our when we had our clothing to Gotti, he came out to our our, our, our party, we invited him. And they came out to our party, our, our clothing line party, and he seen our whole band. We performed, and he was like, man, Godfather, I want y'all to come to the office, man. I think I want to do the band, the, the metal band, you know. So that's when, uh, yep, he, he, uh, so Gangster Red and Monster was with him at that time. Also, Monster was working with him also. Monster was working with Shil? Yeah, uh, the music-wise, after the, with him and uh, Hutch, uh, there, you know, Crooked Eye and um, Corrupt back in those days. The music wise, Amato was helping with the music a little bit. But she have always been, you know, family, always been, you know, we know for, we know for years, you know. You think he's going to get out on this case? I'm mean, hoping, praying. Hoping, praying, you know what I mean? I mean, hoping, praying.